Dr. Cobbs again. Welcome back to BrainCancer.org's lecture series on brain tumors. The topic of this discussion is gliomas. And I want to give a little bit of background and understanding about what we think causes these tumors. We really don't know what causes them. Uh, the only known risk factor for causation in a glioma is ionizing radiation. some very obscure, rare genetic links that may increase the likelihood of someone developing a brain tumor that's called a glioma. However, these occur in probably less than 1% of patients with gliomas. My own research is involved in the possibility that a viral infection could uh, cause these tumors, and we're very interested in the possibility that a virus called cytomegalovirus, or CMV, could be associated with or even causal in brain cancer, but that's still very preliminary. What we do know is some of the biology and genetics of what we think causes these tumors. As I mentioned before, if you take the adult brain and you look at the inside of the brain, you find that there are areas where spinal fluid sort of lives, and these are called the ventricles. And surrounding the ventricles, there are cells that are called ependymal cells, and right next to those cells are cells that have stem cell potential. So let's use uh, another color here. So what do these stem cells do? So let's say that this is the lining where there's spinal fluid in this cavity here, and this is the ependymal surface, and then you have these quote, subependymal cells that are stem cells. Any of these cells can give rise to any of the other glial cells that we had mentioned, or a neuron, and they divide asymmetrically. What does that mean? Well, if a cell divides symmetrically, it divides like that, and then this cell divides like that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Stem cells divide asymmetrically. One cell divides and remains a stem cell, and then a daughter cell divides, and then these cells can divide and become more mature cells. There's a concept that somewhere in this particular developmental stage called the uh, glial precursor cell, prior to becoming an adult astrocyte or adult oligodendrocyte, these cells have some kind of problem where they have obtained radiation or some other mutation. <clears throat> these cells can then go on to become cancer cells. We believe that the most malignant types of gliomas, called glioblastomas, can arise in two general thematic ways. One is by starting off, usually in younger patients, with a mutation of a gene called isocitrate dehydrogenase 1, or IDH1. And this gene may have a very early impact on the free radical production or ability of the cell to tolerate free radicals, which are chemicals that can cause mutations in DNA. We believe that in younger people with gliomas, they often develop an IDH1 mutation and then these cells can go on to acquire multiple different other mutations over years and they can either go in a pathway that leads to an oligodendroglial tumor or an oligo or they can have pathway that leads to an astrocytic type of tumor called an astrocytoma. Or they can have something that is sort of a little bit between. So the typical younger patient with a glioma that starts out as perhaps a grade 2 
may start with a mutation in IDH1. Over years, this tumor may become more aggressive due to changes in, their, in the genes and mutations. It may become a grade three. And then, unfortunately, most of these tumors at some point in the future can go on to become a grade four glioma. When a tumor becomes a grade four, it's universally called a glioblastoma, even if it came from an oligo type of tumor or an astrocytoma. So this pathway is called secondary. secondary glioblastoma, or GBM. And that's because it arises primarily from a lower grade tumor, usually has an IDH1 mutation, and then acquires multiple other mutations over years and years, typically, and then unfortunately can potentially become a glioblastoma.